Hi guys, welcome to the final video in my collection spring cleaning for 2020. I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos. I know I've been enjoying filming them until today. No, I'm kidding. I probably will enjoy filming this. I have been putting this off a little bit, however, because it's going to be a big task. You can probably see we're going to do eyeshadow palettes, so let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start with one I know I'm going to go ahead and let go of. This is the ABH Prism palette. I just did not get on with this one. I, there's nothing in this palette that I'm like, yes, I love this. I'd keep this palette just for this shade. So I'm going to go ahead and let this one go. We'll give a final count at the end of the video. But I just, these are not my colors. I don't love the color story. I was being a completionist when I purchased this, so it's gonna go. The rest of these I am going to keep. I can't see letting go of any of these. This is Norvina, and probably my favorite shade in this palette is Wild Child or Celestial. I don't know, this will be hard with these, but it's a really pretty pink shade. This is Soft Glam, definitely one of my favorites. I will link for you guys the video that I ranked all of my ABH palettes with Heather Austin here on YouTube as a collaboration. And this one definitely ranked highly for me. This is like my perfect warm neutral palette. This is my ABH subculture palette. I do love this color story. This is a very fall autumnal color story, but I just like it in general. It's very grungy, very 90s in my opinion. Here's the modern renaissance. If you have seen or if you haven't seen, I'll link it for you. My unofficial project pan project. This is one of the palettes that I'm working on making progress this year. Spoiler, not a lot of progress, but I did really enjoy also doing seven looks in retrospect with this palette, so I'll link that as well. And we have Carly Bible in ABH. I love this. To be honest, this is becoming one of my favorite ABH palettes. This is gorgeous. It's in my current Shop My Stash for March because I think this is a perfect spring palette. But for me, it's also like a perfect everyday palette. It has just some of my very favorite staple shades in here. And then I have Sultry, which is definitely my favorite mostly cool tone palette. I think, you know, there's definitely shades, warm shades in here. But I think it's predominantly more cool tone, or at least the looks that I create tend to be. So I really love that, and I've gotten a lot of use out of it. And then my newest is, of course, Jackie Ina in ABH. And this is a beautiful palette. This shade right here, sponsored, is gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Warm base with that green. Ooh, look at that green. Look at that green. And then we have these three puppies right here. The Volume 1 ABH Norvina Collection Palette is definitely my favorite of the three. It's the one I get the most use out of. I am absolutely obsessed with this lavender shade right here as well as this is got to be the best white in my collection here. It actually is very, very white. <laughs> so, and I love that and I love that there's a black in here as well, which is really great for mixing, but I just really love this color story. And then we have the ABH Irvina Volume 2. This is the one, as much as I was like, my eyeballs were most come open for Pete's sake. As much as my like eyeballs and my aesthetic were attracted to this one probably the most, it's the one I've gotten the least amount of use out of. Um, that being said, however, it was fall when these all came out. And then here's volume three. I, lo I definitely love this palette. I love this color story. I was a little disappointed, to be honest, with the shimmers in this palette. I think this one right here is really good and this one right here, but these four are pretty chunky and I also wish there had been a few more shimmers in this palette to be honest, 
but this is one of the reasons I'm willing to get rid of Prism. I have that bright fluorescent yellow in here as well as in volume two. These two here from Lorac are in collaboration with Rachel Zoe. This is Effortless Glamour and this is Golden Eyes. To be honest, I was really disappointed that both of these palettes had these pressed glitters in them. It really took away from the value of the palette for me to the point where I was really considering decluttering these today. I just haven't used them a lot and I don't know if I'm not reaching for them because the rest of the colors other than the glitters don't inspire me or if it's just because I have an excess of palettes. So I do think I'll keep these for now. I do plan to dig out the glitter just because I don't want the chance of getting them in my eyes. I'm not overall against pressed glitters, but these ones have very sharp, like square glitters in them, like craft glitter. And if you get that in your eye, you're looking at an injury. What I know I'm ready to get rid of finally is this Lorac Unzipped Ocean Sunset. I'm just not using it. It is a beautiful palette, but there again is not any shades in here at all that I'm like, I have to reach for this particular palette because I want that particular shade. I really like this shade called Saltwater, but as you can see, it just doesn't have any kind of opacity. It's a beautiful topper, but I'm not keeping a palette like this for a topper shade. I think this might have been a holiday release. I'm not for sure. This is the Lorac Le Luxe Diamond Palette, and my friend Kelly from Glam with Kelly was definitely the person that made me want this palette. It is so pretty, and it's just, it's exactly what it says. It's like, it's very luxe, it's a very glam palette, but soft and texture friendly. So I am really glad that I picked this up. Last, I have my two Mega Pros and then we'll do these two palettes. This is my Mega Pro 4. I've just had this for about a month or so. Sorry about the mirror. Um, really cool shades in here. I love this shade called Unicorn. I've never seen a duochrome in one of the Pro palettes before, so I was very excited about that. But that's just such a fun, ethereal, I mean it is absolutely unicorn. I don't know that they could have named it anything else. I think that's really cool. And overall this is a beautiful palette as always. Two rows of matte, two rows of shimmer, and from light to dark. I think it makes these really, really user friendly. Now we have the Lorac Mega Pro 2. I had panned, worked on panning this, I should say, in 2018. My favorite shade in this palette is this one called Olivine. It's one of those really dusky olive greens that's very reflective. Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful palette. It's so it's like an old familiar friend to me, to be honest, and I do have five pans in this palette, and I'm also working on using this more with the Modern Renaissance this year. This is the Sephora Pro Editorial 2.0, and I just freaking love this. I'm wearing this on my eyes today. It's in my Shop My Stash for March. Let me know if there's any specific videos or kinds of looks that you'd like to see with this. Today I filmed a two shadow look with these two guys right here and it turned out magically. <laughs> so I really like that palette. I will say it's kind of delicate because I've had some chipping at the corners of certain pans of uh, shadow. This is the Tati Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1. I did do seven looks with this palette and it's just stunning. This is a palette that I absolutely, 100%, and not just for the glitters, which are good by the way, this is something I would reach into for specific colors. Like this Soothe Metallic right here is like my perfect inner corner highlight or lid shade for a natural look. It's so shiny and it's so flattering on the eye. 
So those are the kind of palettes that I'm looking to keep in my collection. Oh man, these three are gonna be hard. Okay, let's start with one I know I'm getting rid of. This is the Celestial Thunder uh, palette from Dominique's Cosmetics. This was a special made for BoxyCharm palette and I'm just not into it, you guys. The only uh, shade that even calls my name in here is this one and it's definitely like Glitterville and I'm just, <laughs> I'm not interested. Like I've had this since November or December and I haven't even put it on my eyes yet. One that's definitely not going is this KKW Beauty. This is the classic Blossom palette, but this is stunning. Her mattes, her shimmers, it's all, all good. And this is such a beautiful color story. I think I should pull this one out for April because this one will also be gorgeous for spring. First of all, I do like Winky Lux as a brand. This is the original kit kitten palette and I received it in a boxy charm. My hands are not working today. And to be honest, the only reason I keep this palette is for this shade right here, which is called Holographic. It's like pink with a teal reflect little grayed out. I don't know. I can't. I cannot keep this palette just for that shade. Don't get me wrong. The rest of the shades are, they perform beautifully. I just have them in other areas of my collection that I don't need this particular array of colors. So I'm going to be a big girl and I'm going to let this one go. All right, Huda Booty. I don't feel like I have given the Emerald Obsessions its due, as in I don't feel like I've really gotten to know it very well, created enough looks to really have a solid idea of how I feel about this palette, so I do think I'm going to keep this one for now. This one, however, <laughs> this was definitely one of my first purchases from Sephora. So I think that might be part of the emotional attachment to it. This is the Mauve Obsessions. I wish I lived somewhere else where I could say mauve and it was like the thing. Anyhow, um, I've spoken before. These two shades right here are very, very similar, especially on the lid. This is a really pretty pink, but it is not a pink that I don't have elsewhere in my collection. And then these two like deep red wine shades are essentially the same on the lid. And all three of the deep shades really honestly don't blend that well for me. So I think I'm going to let this one go finally. Let's go ahead and talk about these guys from Too Faced. First and foremost, I love the chocolate gold palette. It is a forever friend. I absolutely reach into this palette specifically for very foiled and glittery shadows. I love that there are only four mattes in here, but they are four mattes that you could create a variety of sort of like crease setup situations. And uh, I don't know, I want to get more use out of this because it's absolutely freaking stunning. It's not going anywhere. Another palette that's not going anywhere is this Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. This was my very first high-end palette and I got this actually even before I started my YouTube channel, but it was one of the purchases that sort of was made with the inkling or a twinkling in my eye of having a YouTube channel. I guess maybe I was at the point of wishing I had a YouTube channel or could have one. And so this will always be special to me and it was a special um, situation. I've told the story before where my husband went out of his way to take me and purchase this palette. Then we have Gingerbread Spice. Not my favorite palette, but it does have a place in my collection. I do think the quality of this palette is really good. And I also think that there's a time in my life that I will use this, which is probably mostly fall. Um, and maybe a little bit into the holidays, but I did get some use out of this this last fall in 2019, and I do still enjoy it. This is the tough one. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, my sister and I both have this palette. My sister has used the absolute snot out of hers. And I still love this blue-brown pigment. I know I have it elsewhere in my collection, so I definitely don't need to keep this palette for this shade, but this shade definitely was one of the deciders in purchasing this palette. <sighs> and to be honest, as much as I love this palette, I no longer love this brand. And my daughter borrows, my daughter's not quite 12, she turns 12 this month, she borrows this palette from me every single weekend. Like this is her favorite palette, it has always been her favorite palette in my collection. And when she wants to do my makeup, she asks to use this palette. So I think I am actually going to gift this to my daughter. This palette actually has just shown up at Ulta Beauty. This is the Natural Beauty Eye Reflection Shadow Palette. Emily Noel picked this up, but I actually got this palette quite some time ago in a giveaway. And while it looks like practically nothing in the pan and like very, a lot of similar shades, it really isn't. Like this one is practically pink, but it definitely does not look pink in the pan. And they're just really honestly some really foiled and phenomenal shades. Um, I think I'll use it more now that my collection will be nice and cleaned up. I mean, look at those. Those are from the drugstore, baby. This was a gift from my kiddos last year for Mother's Day. This is the Hello English Rose. Hello Beautiful English Rose. There we go. I think they had a couple of Hello Beautiful palettes, and then this was the English Rose version. You have some face products down here, and they're actually pretty. Um, I haven't used them a lot on my face, but I just have, again, excess, and I haven't gotten to use this palette much at all. But there are some beautiful shades that I love in this palette. I did get some good use out of it last year when I first got it. And then we have some e.l.f. palettes. This is new. I've only used this once, but this is one of their new bite-sized palettes in the colorway rose water and it's really pretty. Um, it is, I think, pretty similar to the formula that I've come to expect from e.l.f. in some of their more recent palettes. So yeah, that was a terrible place to swatch. <laughs> Anyhow, it's, it's beautiful and I think for $3 it's an absolute bargain. So these are in the permanent line. This is the e.l.f. New Classics. This is the second one I've purchased because I did give away my first one to my stepmom. I wanted her to have it because I think it's such a beautiful starter palette for someone getting into makeup, but um, I missed it. So I had to repurchase it and they're just so full color. I mean, one swipe, you guys, that's all. This is definitely the palette that I most recommend to a beginner who's looking for a variety of neutral shades. This is the Earth and Ocean palette. I did do seven looks, I think. I don't know, I did a bunch of looks. They'll be linked below. These also are just the most amazing colors ever. I just I just love these. This one, Sun Yourself, I absolutely reach into this palette just for that shade. It's just such a pretty um, yellow. And then this blue duochrome called Salt Water. This is a really nice palette as well. These um, 18 pan palettes from e.l.f. are actually really, really good. I do recommend them. Now, let's talk about this purchase. These are the three e.l.f. Haute chocolate palettes from holiday 2019. I bought these specifically, one, because I wanted to see if they were comparable to the 18 pan palettes. Um, two, because they're somewhat dupey for some higher end palettes, so I really wanted to investigate that for you guys. But 
then I don't know what happened I got sick whatever I kind of missed the bus <laughs> on you know getting a review up and looks up for you guys and then I was like well did I purchase these for nothing and then I just had such an excess of things that I purchased in December so I really haven't gotten to play with these yet I don't think I need to keep all three the one I'm tempted to let go is this one here in the middle but let's this one here OMG it's so pretty it is quite neutral but it I don't know I do think these perform pretty well I don't know that I think they perform as well as the 18 pan palettes, but look at that silver. I mean, that's really here to play. I think I will keep that one and close you up. Let's do this one. This is the other one I'm tempted to keep. Um, I have not, I think I've only done looks with a couple of these and also swatched them. There are some pretty shades in there. However, I don't know if those are shades that I don't have. This is the dilemma. All right, think about you. This is the one I'm tempted to let go of just because I don't know that I, I mean, I have these colors. I know I have these colors. I'm gonna let that one go for sure and that one go for sure. I think I'm gonna keep this guy for now just because I wanna play with it more. I love these shades. I already decluttered the Emily Edit the Needs palette, the face palette, which was very hard because I do like it, but I haven't gotten any use out of it. This, however, I love. This is the Wants palette from Emily Noel, and I just love these colors. It's special to me. The formula is okay. Probably not the most long-lasting formula, but I do love it. these colors from Emily. I don't know. I don't even know if these are going to perform anymore, to be honest, but I'm not ready to get rid of it. I cried when Emily announced this collaboration just because I was so, so happy that someone was recognizing her and how wonderful she is. So, all right, let's get into the rest. Here is the Tasty Avocado palette from I Heart Revolution. These are all like revolution-ish um palettes this is beautiful i really love this i did not use this as much as i wanted to be honest i had some issues with these shadows lasting on my eyes but to be fair i was having trouble overall at that time getting shadows to stay on my eyeballs all day so I do think I'm actually going to keep this one for now I want to try it with the Ulta Beauty um, matte eye primer in nude because that stuff's like concrete so I'm going to keep that one this however was such a freaking impulse purchase it really makes me a little bit sick this is the Revolution Pro Earth and Stone palette and I specifically bought this because what kind of a palette does this look like to you? Anybody getting Pat McGrath vibes? I thought so too. <laughs> These shades however that I was really interested in, I don't, yeah, you can see they're Chunk City and really disappointing to be honest. And the rest of the palette unfortunately <laughs> is nothing very special so this puppy is gonna go in the declutter pile somebody can make use of this and then these last two from makeup revolution my kids picked for me my son picked this one and my daughter picked this one this was a part of my Christmas gift from them last year this is the one that Hannah picked. This is the Tammy X Revolution Tropical Carnival Shadow Palette. And it is so pretty. I cannot wait to play with these colors. And these metallics here are absolutely sensational. I, I think these are gonna be beautiful on the eyes. And I think I definitely will even dig these out for spring. The mattes are also really nice. So I'm looking forward to playing with these. Hannah told me when I told her I was gonna be filming an eyeshadow declutter that I absolutely was not allowed 
to declutter this one. <laughs> uh, she's like, you can declutter the one that Aiden picked if you want, but not this one. And you'll see why. Um, so I'm definitely keeping that. I would anyways, even had she not bought it for me. This is the Makeup Revolution Fierce Wild Animal Palette. And my son picked this out for me and I, <laughs> this is so my son. It's like, I don't know, it's almost like a mullet, like a lit business in the front, party in the back. There's like just a small smattering of color in here, but mostly neutral. And these, this formula is something else. It's really, really cool. And I cannot wait to get these on my eyeballs. Um, I need to pull it out and play with it soon. I mean, good grief. I got it for Christmas and I still don't think I have put it on my eyes. But these feel really soft and amazing. So anyways, I'm keeping this. I, again, I would be keeping them even had my kids not purchased them for me because they're really pretty and they're a very decent quality. All right, back in the day, once upon a time, there was an app called Shop Hush, and you could order dupe palettes on there. Now we have other companies, they are no longer a thing. I believe the owners of Shop Hush have now created Alter Ego, and they also create dupe palettes. This was a dupe for a palette that didn't exist <laughs> at the time. This is the Face Candy Atlantis palette, and this was a dupe for the April Fool's joke from Tarte called Icy Betch. <laughs> and this was like their clapback because then Tarte didn't actually create it. <laughs> now they have, but it isn't in this format and nobody really liked it. I, there are shades that I absolutely love in here. However, I don't know. I haven't used it. I didn't use it at all in 2019, which I think probably tells you something. It's not the 100% best formula in the, in the world. I mean, I was very happy to have it at the time because that was long before the whole green and blue obsession that people... You know, everybody started making green and blue palettes. And so, if I'm being honest, I think I'm gonna let this go. I do feel like I have all of these colors and other palettes and formulas that I prefer. This is a very nice white, I will say that much. But I just think somebody might else might have fun with this palette. And like I said, I did not pull this out of my collection once in the year of 2019, so clearly I don't need it. This is the Bad Habit Athena palette, again from Shop Hush. This is a dupe for a Huda Beauty palette that I don't have. I don't like the pressed glitter in here, don't touch that, you'll lose your eyeballs, but I love the rest of this palette. And I'm hoping now, that, again, that I have a handle on my collection that I'll be able to make more use out of these palettes that I've been longing to use but just never had the time. I do think it's a nice formula and it is getting older so I either need to use it or lose it but I really love this color story so I am going to keep it for now. This is the Weekend Festival palette, another one of those palettes. Sorry about the mirror, guys. Another one of those palettes that I just don't get use out of because I have too much eyeshadow, but I do want to. These are some really beautiful colors. i got to at least keep it through this summer and see if I get some use out of it, and then if I don't, go ahead and let it go. But I can just see so many looks when I look at this palette, so I'm going to keep it. We have Royal Affair, which is a really beautiful palette, actually. This is definitely mostly neutral, but it's a beautiful palette. I mean, there's all kinds of colors in here that I love, not just the pops of color. And it's, obviously, I like lime green, huh? And it's a very good formula, actually. This one doesn't feel quite as dried out as the Weekend Festival, but, you know, that stands to reason because Weekend Festival is older. Now we have the Zodiac palette. I do love this palette, but man, I never reach for it. And not because I don't want to. Like, I was swatching this just the other day. Favorite shade in the palette is this one right here, Aquarius. 
but oh man it is such a good palette and I do get requests um, I haven't forgotten Deborah <laughs> I do get requests to do more looks with this palette so I know a lot of you still have it as well I mean there's no denying those baked shadows are something else alrighty let's move on to ColourPop first we have the going coconuts palette I ordered this in December and I love this palette. I absolutely love this palette. It's such a good quality and while it looks rather boring, it's actually just the most beautiful color story. Very high performance shadows. I actually purchased it for my bestie as well for Christmas and I hope she's enjoying it. One I'm considering getting rid of is this Element of Surprise palette. Part of me is tempted to keep it because I like my nice little ColourPop collection here. But again, I didn't reach for this at all in 2019. Ooh, see, and it's not even performing as well as it used to. That all looks pretty chunky. I'm gonna let that one go. Surprise, surprise, actually, because I thought about it and I was like, I really should declutter that one, but then I was like, but no, I don't want to. I like having all of my ColourPop palettes. But to be honest, you guys, like that completionist mentality is actually leaving me more and more every day. I just want to use the things I love and not have the things that I don't absolutely love like hanging out and cluttering up my collection. All right, these puppies I know I'm keeping. This one is very new. Uh, I got this in December before my beauty budget started in January. This is really, really pretty. Um, Jessica Braun raves about this palette and for good reason. It's really beautiful. If you like warm neutrals and wear them a lot, I definitely recommend them. I mean, holy cow, look at that. <laughs> And then a palette that I actually coveted for quite a long time but kept talking myself out of because it wouldn't mean anything to purchase this and have this now. I mean, it, in essence, on YouTube. Like, nobody's talking about this palette anymore, or at least very rarely. And I think this is a phenomenal palette. I'm so glad to have it in my life, to be honest. And I'm so glad that I finally just let myself purchase it regardless of what it would or wouldn't bring to my channel because I just like this color story. And then my most recent purchase, I actually got this with points as well as this uh, Just a Tint lip crayon here. And this is the You Are a Cutie palette. I think this is supposed to be one of, yeah, this is one of their Super Shop shadows in their palettes. And then, you know, you have a lot of other beautiful shades. Look at those right there. And my balls. Nothing swashes as well in my arm as it does on my hand. But you can be sure that this is a beautiful palette. This is also in my Shop My Stash for March. Okay, let's talk Morphe. Let's start with Jacqueline here. I worked on panning this in... 2019 and I actually did a pretty decent job. I've pan on seven shades in this palette and I don't hate it. <laughs> like I don't hate this palette. I'm very close to hitting pan on some other shades in here but oh man do I love this palette. I will say she's definitely getting older in terms of how the formula feels but there's shades in here that I just can't see living my life without, and that's how I know I need to keep a palette. She's looking a little rough and dirty though, isn't she? That's okay, we love her anyway. The palette that I never declutter that I always should, this is the Morphe 35F. Look at it, it's so pretty. I bought this because it has one row of mattes and then the rest are shimmer. What I didn't realize was most of this looks the same or similar on the eye. This formula in this particular Morphe palette is actually really freaking fantastic. I, it swatches really well. 
it looks really nice on the eyes look at that but I don't reach for it again didn't reach for it once in 2019 and that's that but I am going to let this one go here are some of my indie palettes this is the Alamar Cosmetics Reina del Caribe palette oh <laughs> this one again oh, see look at that that teal is so pretty and while I have similar shades to this the teal is so pretty Oh, guys, but I don't use the other shades. Lacosta, when I use this palette, is pretty, but I don't reach for this palette for that shade. And if, again, if usage is any indication, I don't believe I use this at all in 2019. I have a lot of turquoise eyeshadows. Actually, I think I probably have something similar to this in one of those large Norvina palettes. So. I'm gonna let it go. If you're even thinking that I'm going to get rid of either of my Persona Cosmetics palettes, then you're a crazy person. <laughs> this is my number one palette in my collection. This is the green shade that I was talking about that's meh, maybe not super similar. It's more goldy than this green from Alamar, but I just love this palette and I, you know, it's gonna be in my my collection forever. This is the one palette in my collection I would consider buying a backup of. But don't buy backups, that's a bad idea. And then this is the Identity 2 palette. I just did seven looks with these two palettes combined. This blue and this yellow are two of my favorite shades in the palette. It's so pretty. I just love this denim blue and then this true yellow, like a canary yellow metallic shade. It's stunning. Let's take care of these two that I only have one of down here. This is the Certify Affinity 2 palette. This is the reason I feel confident in letting go of the Face Candy Atlantis palette because I have beautiful blues and greens in this palette. I really need to get this blue on my eyes for spring and these duochromes are just stunning. And this was my, well, first and only experience with Certify as a brand, so I was really pleased with my experience. Okay, this is the Blush Tribe and Paulana palette. I love this. I did a huge collaboration with some friends last year using this palette. And I miss you, Paulana. Not that you're probably watching this, but she's taking a little break or who knows what from YouTube. And that's, I totally respect that. But we miss you in case you're watching. This is a beautiful palette. I should definitely pull this in next month because this would be so pretty to do some spring looks with, which I'm continuing to do throughout spring, creating some really simple spring looks with my Shop My Stash palettes. And then we have my Juvia's Place palettes. And here's another sorry realization. I haven't used either one of these on my eyeballs. I have only swatched them and not because I don't want to, I desperately want to, but again, I only do my makeup once a day and I'm only one person with two eyeballs. And so I cannot wait <laughs> to use this palette. It's so pretty. It's one of the, again, one of those older palettes um, from a brand that people really aren't talking about anymore but I don't care because I want them for my own collection like I want them where I can use them so whatever and then this is the Nubian 3 coral palette did I say what this was this is the Saharan palette by Juvia's and then this is the Nubian 3 coral palette I think this is so cool <laughs> it just I don't know, coral and like gray and bronze. And look at this orangey um, metallic there. Ooh, so pretty. And then I have the Deuce palette 
by Juvia's Place. I have definitely used this quite a bit. I love using this pink shade up at the top as a blush. Um, in fact, I almost always do when I use this palette. You can see the duochrome and that beautiful mint green. It's just stunning. It's quite, I don't know, this one especially. I love this color story. This is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette and I actually talked about this in a recent video about products that I don't use as much as I thought I would and not because I don't like them. Ooh, this is kind of similar to the Teal and the Alomar palette but I, I do like this palette. I just haven't used it as much as I thought I was going to. I thought this was gonna be like my staple neutral palette with some pops of color. Ooh, that would be really pretty, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it's a beautiful palette. It's not going anywhere. This, I, it's beautiful. I really like this. I like the formula, I like the color story. So I'm keeping that. This one I gotta still think on. I love this palette and I love the fact that my hubby picked this out for me. He is such a stinker. Here's a blue brown pigment that I can also sub for the Clover palette. But uh, yeah, my hubby picked this out. It was half off after Christmas and he was like, ooh, would you use this? And I was like, sure. So, you know, he's a deal hound. If anything, that's a deal. <laughs> um, but this is really, and I really like this palette. This is actually what I was kind of hoping the brighter or the color, more colored shades in the Urban Decay palette, uh, the Urban Decay, <laughs> Born to Run palette would be, um, you know, a little bit brighter, but they were more mid to deep. So I'm glad I have this one and I definitely actually, per definitely actually, I do prefer this one over the Born to Run palette. And this puppy, again, I never used this in 2019, I don't think. I think it's still in good condition. I'm sorry, this is the Urban Decay Distortion palette. And this also was one of my first, uh, higher end palettes. Just layering these transformers over shadows, I was like, oh damn, I'm gonna use that all the time because how cool, you know, it doesn't even have to be these shadows in here. I can layer them over any of the shadows in my collection. And the rest of the shadows are really good too. There's only two mattes in here. It's the black and the gray, but the rest of the shades are really nice as well. And I don't know why I'm not pulling it out. I mean, this is not the last declutter I'm ever going to do. I've done really well so far. I can't even count just at a glance how many palettes I've already decluttered. So I think I'm gonna feel okay with keeping this for now. This is definitely going. This is a nice palette, but I do not use these shades ever. It was a beautiful gift from my husband and children, which is why I've kept it as long as I have, as well as these used to be my only MAC shadows, but I don't use these shades. So all it's doing is just drying out and dying in my drawer. So I'm gonna let it go. And then a palette that my daughter picked out for my birthday this year. This is the MAC Art Library Nude Model Palette. And she said, you need some MAC eyeshadows in your collection. I think she forgot about the Patrick Star one, which she would have been really little when I got that one. But I like this a lot, actually. It's, I do like the MAC eyeshadow formula. It's not the most foiled, like out of control situation, but they're good shadows and they're good for every day. I'm glad this is neutral um, because I'm really into that. And I do, I do like having sort of my staple MAC shadows in my collection. And these are beautiful colors that I will make a lot of use out of. And then we have two Violet Voss palettes. The Flamingo is was my first colorful palette other than my BH, um, what was that one? 
Oh, it's the one with all the color. Oh, take me back to Brazil palette. But this has so many beautiful colors. I'm definitely keeping it. I love the Violet Voss formula. Do I think it's the most fantastic formula there ever was created? No, but it's a damn good one. I could tell you that much. And this is at absolutely stood the test of time as well. This is a couple years old now and those shimmers and mattes and everything are just as vibrant as the day we met. <laughs> and then we have the Violet Voss Pro Eyeshadow Holy Grail Palette. I got this in a boxy charm. I apologize about the mirror, it won't bend back. Uh, I got this in a boxy charm and actually really do like the colors in it. I like the different textures in here and I think I will definitely get more use out of it now that my collection is a bit <laughs> more manageable. If I wasn't swatching I would put air quotes. But there are really pretty colors. There's some unique colors in here that I really like. There's some colors in here that are definite go-tos for a one shadow look. Like I love this shade Cool Beans as a one shadow look. Okay, last couple palettes. We gotta hurry because my phone's dying. Okay, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Starry Eyes to Hypnotize palette. I got this for Christmas 2019 and I absolutely love this. It's definitely one of my go-to everyday palettes but it definitely packs a punch it's just superior quality in my opinion you can agree you can disagree as long as you do it respectfully but for me this was worth every bit of what my husband paid for it then I have two Viseart palettes this is the Petite Pro 2 I don't even know that I've used this on my channel to be honest, but it is a beautiful palette. Absolutely stunning. I think this will be another one that you'll see at some point on my channel this spring. Okay, and then this is my newest palette at the time I'm filming this. This is the Viseart Paris Edit, and it is so pretty, you guys. So, so pretty. I am loving these colors. Kelly said it's like that palette was made for you <laughs> it's so true though this is like my perfect rosy cool tone palette and I think I'm going to use the absolute snot out of it and then last but not least the four Natasha Denona palettes hurry before the camera dies here is another blue brown pigment that I can use I love every shade in this palette it's really easy to reach for on a day where I need a quick look because it just kind of takes the guesswork out of things here is my new Natasha Denona love palette this silver is something else but I also love these cream to powder shadows holy smokes they're cool I mean just geez look at it oh Pretty, pretty, pretty. And that dark purple called Commitment, that's also a cream to powder shadow, and I love that as a liner with this palette or any eyeshadow look. And then we have Lila, that was my very first one from Mahubi. And I mean, there's so many good shades in this palette. I clearly have used this quite a bit although you probably I don't know if you how much you can tell with the angle but this is a really beautiful palette I do recommend it and then of course my beautiful I was gonna say chocolate gold palette <laughs> my beautiful Natasha Denona gold palette look at that there's no denying the vibrancy and like special textures that Natasha Denona has to offer at least not in my opinion so I'm gonna get myself together here real quick and charge my phone and we will come back with some final numbers I'm back I've had some lunch never declutter on an empty stomach just a word to the wise and I've had another look at my collection. I found three more palettes here that I need to let go of. I swatched these two little Lorac palettes and between the two, this is one I'm just not excited about. I swatched this shade right here 
which is a shade that I like but it's very glittery and there's a similar shade in the other palette that is more metallic so I am going to go ahead and let go of that one and then I decided to go ahead and let go of this elf palette as well this is a really beautiful palette but these are not colors that I don't have this is a hard one to let go this is the urban decay distortion again um but this is the point where I have to be real with myself and the reality is that I did not open this palette one time in 2019 willingly or for a specific shade or anything like that. None of the bottom two rows are anything special to my collection at all. <laughs> and to be honest, I do have some like more duochrome or like transformer shades in my collection now than when I first purchased this palette but I want someone to find you know use this palette and find love for it the way I had when I first got it and there's nothing at all whatsoever wrong with it which is why I think I've had a hard time letting go of it as well as there's always that little inkling at the back of the mind it's like well what if you know what if I decide I want this one day what if I decide that I regret rec decluttering it I am just feeling okay with letting this go I guess I don't know how to describe it other than I feel fine with letting it go I hope someone else can get enjoyment out of this palette because I have not used it in a minimum of 12 months and that tells me I'm probably not going to. So, these are all of the palettes I am letting go today. There are 17 in total, and what I have left is 57 eyeshadow palettes. That's not a small number, but 17 less is definitely smaller than it was, so I feel really good about that. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to really unpack the numbers behind my declutter. I'm going to show you some things that either came back into my collection from previous videos that I decluttered. I think there's only one at this point but we're really just going to unpack the numbers talk about goals talk about where I was last year so stay tuned that will be the last and final video in this decluttered series I hope you enjoyed today I know I did even though I was dreading pulling out all of my palettes but now I get to do the fun part which is putting all of the ones that I decided to keep away in my drawer. I will have a picture of that right here for you. I know a lot of people get curious about storage and how things are, you know, how things look after the declutter and whatnot. I also will be having a new beauty space tour coming up very soon for you guys so you can see inside all of the drawers and you know this that and the other thing how I stay organized on YouTube how I keep my larger collection organized and so on and with all of that said I really hope all of your makeup days are absolutely gorgeous makeup days and I will see you in my next video soon.